All right, everybody. Good evening. I would like to welcome you to the Virtual Public Information Forum for the Gold Butte National Monument Implementation Plan. This implementation plan will guide the future management and protection of Gold Butte National Monument. My name is Ali Amitsky and I work for EMPSI and serve as the Public Involvement Coordinator and Resource Specialist for this project. We are a national environmental consulting firm working with the BLM to facilitate this forum and manage the Zoom application. With me today on the call are my coworkers from EMPSI, Teresa Ansel, our project manager, and William Penner, our public outreach specialist. I'll be assisting the BLM today with the facilitation of the forum, question and answer and response session, and the input session. Before beginning today's presentation, we will briefly review the forum agenda, participation rules, and introduce the BLM specialist assisting with responding to questions today. I would like to remind everyone that the forum is being recorded and to enable the use of closed captions, you can click the live transcript button on your Zoom toolbar and then select show subtitles. To support this public forum, we have created a virtual public forum website. You can access the website at www.virtualpublicmeeting.com backslash goldview-national-monument Dash EA. And that link is also now available in the Zoom chat if you click that at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar as well. Let's go to slide number two. During today's forum, we will review the forum details, meet the BLM specialist, and provide the project presentation. The presentation will review the planning area and describe the purpose of preparing an implementation plan. Once we have learned more about the planning effort, I'll provide a quick tutorial of our virtual public forum website, and we will then move into the question and answer and response session, followed by a public input session. Let's go to slide number three. Your microphones will remain closed until the public input session. If you have an urgent question or need technical assistance, you can enter your message into the chat box now, and a technician will contact you. You may also email our technician at teresa.ansell at empsi.com. And let's go to slide number four, please. If you do not see your Zoom toolbar, you may need to toggle your mouse around or push on your phone screen for it to pop up. Again, we will provide more detailed instructions during the Q&A and input sessions. We do ask that you avoid use of inappropriate language and respect all participants and viewpoints for the duration of this forum. I would now like to introduce Shauna Duman, the Las Vegas Field Office Manager, to introduce the project and the team. Shauna? Hi, thank you, Ali. Good evening, and thank you everyone for joining our meeting tonight. My name is Shauna Duman, and I am the Field Manager for the Las Vegas Field Office of the BLM. Today, we are presenting on one of our projects. We are in the very early in the process of gathering information to inform the development of an implementation plan for the Gold Butte National Monument. The purpose of today's forum is to provide you information on what the project is about and to answer your preliminary questions. We also want to provide you an opportunity to provide us with oral and written input so that we have information as we move forward with the plan. The implementation plan is in the earliest stages of development. We have not yet developed the plan and neither have we begun the process under the National Environmental Policy Act. We are engaging with you early in the process to hear your thoughts, get your input and hear your concerns to help us develop a better project. We want to hear what you would like to see for management actions in the Gold Butte National Monument. For example, whether you would like formal camping areas, designated hiking trails or defined OHV staging areas. On the bottom of the slide, there is a link for more information regarding the project and access to this presentation. Assisting with the project in today's forum is Stephanie Clark, the project manager, who will present the project overview and detailed information about the implementation plan. Also assisting with answering your questions tonight are the following people from the Bureau of Land Management. John Asselin, JJ Smith, Steve Leslie, Lee Kirk, Jennifer Dirk, Jimmy Linares, Tyler Warner, and Brayden Gard. Let's go to slide six, please. 
The implementation plan is being developed to focus management direction outlined in the existing Las Vegas resource management plan for the Gold Butte National Monument. It has determined the best method to implement the management directives and determine if changes are needed for the Las Vegas Research Management Plan to allow for on the ground activities to proceed. Developing an implementation plan creates an opportunity for continued collaboration with the public, tribes, and governmental agencies. I am now going to turn it over to Stephanie Clark for the project presentation. Thank you, Shauna. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Clark and I'm the project manager for the Gold Butte National Monument Implementation Plan. I'll be providing the project overview. As seen on this, excuse me, uh, can we go one more slide, my apologies, and I'll begin again. Good evening, uh, I'm the project manager for the Gold Butte National Monument, and I'll be providing the project overview. As you see on this map, the monument is in Northeastern Clark County, between the city of Mesquite and the Lake Mead National Recreation Area and is managed by the Las Vegas Field Office. Slide eight, please. The Gold Butte National Monument was added as a unit of the National Landscape Conservation System by Presidential Proclamation 9559 in December of 2016. It encompasses nearly 300,000 acres of remote and rugged landscape in Southeastern Nevada and provides popular locations for solitude, outdoor recreation, Native American connections, historical teachings, a backcountry byway through the namesake town, and numerous peaks, canyons, and geologic forms. The area is rich in natural and archeological resources, historical remnants of early settlers, and contains habitat for the threatened desert tortoise, as well as special status plant and wildlife species. Slide nine. The monument contains a variety of resources, including vital plant and wildlife habitat, significant geologic formations, rare fossils and historic remnants of Western mining and ranching heritage. The monument is also rich with prehistoric sites of Native American heritage. The most popular activities include off-highway vehicle operation, dispersed camping, hiking, horseback riding, and hunting. Visitors tour archeological and cultural areas, drive the back, excuse me, drive the Gold Butte Backcountry Byway through a historic mining town, observe unique ge geologic features and picturesque landscapes, or travel to remote wilderness areas to enjoy the solitude of Gold Beach's natural estates. Over the next few slides, we will discuss the implementation plan, background, and potential focus areas. Slide 10. The Presidential Proclamation directs the Secretary of the Interior to prepare and maintain a management plan for the monument. The implementation plan serves as that plan. As Shauna stated earlier, the implementation plan is developed to focus management direction outlined in the existing Las Vegas Resource Management Plan for the Gold Butte National Monument. The BLM is seeking to determine the best method to implement management directives from the Las Vegas Resource Management Plan and determine if changes are necessary to allow for on the ground actions to proceed. The Presidential Proclamation further requires that the BLM will provide opportunities for maximum public participation, or excuse me, involvement during development of the plan. The maximum involvement includes these public information forums, consultation with state, tribal, and local governments, and other federal agencies. Throughout the development of the implementation plan, there will be additional opportunities for the public to participate. However, this form is the earliest opportunity and the most important input period as we identify initial interests and concerns. The next slides will look at preliminary issues the BLM is considering for the implementation plan. Slide 12. 
cultural, historic, and tribal resources. How should these resources be protected, preserved, or restored while still allowing for the appropriate public visitation, outreach, and educational efforts? What level of management should the BLM apply to restore and improve historical resources that have been damaged? What management actions are necessary to ensure continuation of tribal activities and traditional use of sacred sites? For example, remove vegetation adjacent to petroglyphs to protect them from fires. Slide 13. Wildlife and special species status, excuse me, and special status species. What management actions should be taken to restore, maintain, or enhance priority species and their habitats, including habitat, critical habitat for listed species, such as the desert tortoise. For example, install water features at or near springs to replenish depleting water supplies. Slide 14. Veg vegetation resources. What management actions are essential to maintain and improve vegetation, biological crust, and native plant communities? Or which, which vegetative treatments should be considered to reduce the spread of exotic or invasive species? For example, plant native species in areas damaged by fire. Next, uh, slide 15. Recreation. How will areas of high visitation be managed to protect sensitive resources? How will special recreation permits be managed? Are any facilities, such as campgrounds or trails, needed for current recreation use? For example, where would restroom facilities be added to protect the resources and improve the visitor experience? Slide 16. Lands and realty. What management actions are necessary to ensure that water delivery facilities from valid and existing water rights can be renewed, operated, and maintained, replaced, modified, or upgraded while protecting the resources? For example, work with the Virgin Valley Water District to ensure current and for future water rights are sufficient to meet the demand. The issues discussed on this and previous slides do not include all potential areas for consideration. This is the earliest stage of the, of the development process, and we hope that you will take this very important time to provide us with any questions or input you may have for the future of the monument. The beauty, adventure, and culture, the land are awaiting for your ideas. We'll now turn it back to Allie. Thank you. Thank you for that great overview, Stephanie. We will now go ahead and go over our uh, forum website that we have developed for the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. All right, um, so this website will be active for the duration of the public information gathering period. It is currently ongoing and uh, we will be accepting input through March 3rd, 2022. Again, this link is available in the Zoom chat window if you click that link on the toolbar. On this website, you'll find a multitude of information on the background of both the project and the monument. Um, there'll be information on why the BLM is asking for input and how best to provide that input, as well as information and registration for future public forums. So here at the top of the page, you'll find registration links for our next forum, which we will be holding on Thursday, February 17th, again from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific. Further down here, we have details on the information gathering process. Um, and there is information on the, uh, there's links rather, excuse me, to the BLM Goldview National Monument webpage. 
We also have a link here where you can download a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. Um, however, this meeting is being recorded and will also be available uh, on this web page. As we scroll through the page, you'll see the project background and overview section. This includes a map of the monument and surrounding areas. And this can be really helpful if your input is directed at a specific location within the monument. This map can help you um, kind of describe that location that you may be discussing. Further down, there's more information on our virtual public information forum meeting, meetings, um, including registration links. And if you happen to be joining us by phone, there are instructions there as well. As we scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see the how to provide public input button. Uh, and this page will again go over some more information on the public input period, um, as you can see here, extending through March 3rd of this year, uh, and a little bit more information and background on uh, public input in general and specifically for this project. Uh, again, as we scroll through the page, uh, there are multiple ways that you can provide your input. Um, so here we have a mailing address for the Las Vegas field office. There is also an email link here to uh, the direct project email. And we also have this form here at the bottom where you can directly input uh, your information and your input. These links and uh, the addresses for both the email and the Las Vegas field office will be available in the chat box and we will have them on the screen throughout the presentation as well. So if you didn't get a chance to jot those down, there will be another opportunity later on this evening. And Teresa, I'll have you uh, take us back to our presentation and I will hand it off to William Penner who will take us through the question and answer session with our BLM specialists. Thanks, Ali. As Ali said, my name is William Penner. I'm with the MPSI and I'm helping the BLM here this evening. I just wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit about sort of the tips and tricks for using Zoom during this question and answer session. And really the most important button you're gonna look at is in the lower right hand uh, portion of your toolbar down there. And that's the Q&A icon. And that's really how all the questions are gonna be going ahead and coming in for the BLM this evening. We're only using the chat icon for urgent technical questions. As an example, if you say, um, I, you know, having a problem connecting or I have a friend who's trying to connect, how can you help me? Um, and then later on, when we go ahead at the top of the hour, about 45 minutes from now, go to the public input session, we're also going to be able to go ahead and use the raise hand feature. One other way you can go ahead and ask for technical assistance is you can also email Teresa at the following email, teresa.ansel at empsi.com. And with that, let's go to slide 18. Perfect. So this is where we're going to spend quite a bit of time now um, up until the top of the hour. So this is sort of how the question and answer session is going to work. There's a couple different steps. So principally, go ahead and again, click that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. What that does is it brings up the Q&A box. You can then go ahead and type a question. You can click the little button there that says send anonymously, or you don't have to. You can send it so we see who, what your name is, and then go ahead and hit send. And then basically, there's a couple different options. The third step is really waiting for the BLM to answer your question. They can either go ahead and provide a written response or they also may choose to go ahead and read off your question and then provide their answer live. And really just a bit of guidance here. So with this, we're asking that everyone go ahead and only submit their question once. And the BLM is really gonna be striving to go ahead and answer questions as quickly as possible, but recognize of course that the ID team is limited and they're trying to answer everyone's questions. And it might just take a couple minutes for them to process the question then provide the answer. And again, we're not using the chat button to go ahead and submit questions, only the Q&A icon. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and ask Stephanie to rejoin us. And Stephanie and Allie and I are gonna be working together as we go ahead and, and work through basically about the next 40 minutes at this point. And Stephanie, while we're waiting for question and answers to go ahead and begin to come in and really um, for the ID team to be able to start to answer them, 
Um, I'm just going to go ahead. We did have some folks actually ask questions before this, and I'm, I'm going to touch on a couple of them straight away. And one of the questions was, um, some members of the public asked, you know, why did the BLM choose to go ahead and, and hold a virtual forum um, versus uh, holding one in person? You know, why didn't they have one in Mesquite? Why didn't they have one in Moapa Valley or any of the affected communities? And really, there's a couple different reasons for this. But the principal reason is really that the Department of Interior and the BLM, they have COVID guidance and restrictions on the number of people that can attend in-person meetings. So really, at this time, due to the pandemic, um, the BLM wanted to make sure that there was maximum participation in this important and collaborative process. And that's why they decided to use this virtual forum. Excellent, William. Thanks for explaining that uh, to everyone. Ali, I think we have uh, one question already that we can uh, go ahead and respond to from the, from the Q and A's. Yes, we do. Uh, we have a question from Rick Schmals. Pardon me if I uh, miss said your last name, but their question was, how, when, and where will public questions and comments, as well as BLM responses be publicly available for review? Excellent question. So following the end of the public input period, the BLM will create a report documenting the information received from cooperating agencies, key stakeholders, and the public. This information will be used to develop the alternatives and management actions under consideration in <clears throat> for the implementation plan. The issues identified will focus the analysis of impacts for this planning effort. And as I respond to that question, I'd, I'd like to, if you guys will allow me a little bit, I'd like to go ahead and um, discuss the differences between the implementation plan and a resource management plan, because we've had a couple of questions on that. Um, people not quite sure uh, what we're doing in this process. So we're going to discuss that. We discussed a little bit in the uh, presentation, but just to make sure that we're moving forward and, and clear on, on what we're trying to achieve here. And the implementation plan is developed to focus management direction outlined in the resource management plan and the planning documents exclusive of the RMP for the Goldview National Monument to determine the best method to implement the management directives from the resource management plan and determine if changes to the Las Vegas resource management plan are needed to, to allow for on the ground actions to proceed. Developing an implementation plan is gives us that primary opportunity to uh, engage the public as we get more focused effort um, into the management of Gold Butte in accordance with the resource management plan. So um, that's uh, the difference that we've got between the implementation plan and the resource management plan. Hand it back to you, William. Great, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, we do have a, another question. This question comes from Ben Roberts and they asked, Will this plan also include travel management? And thank you for your question. Presidential Proclamation 9559 codified the existing motorized mechanized travel net network, allowing only for changes to the network where it is in the interest of public safety or to enhance protection of the values identified therein. Designation of existing and new non-motorized trails review of discrepancies in the existing designations within the motorized travel network and evaluation of the need for road and trail improvements may be evaluated during the development of the implementation plan. If it is in the interest of public safety or enhancement of, excuse me, of the values within the monument. I hope that answers your question. You know, Stephanie, one of the other questions that had previously been answered, or sorry, asked, and then uh, uh, BLM developed some answers was a question about bathrooms or facilities. I'm sure some of us at various times that those have been very important things to know about. Really, the question was, will bathrooms or other facilities be constructed and installed as part of this implementation plan? And the BLM's answer is really that, you know, installation or construction of these recreation facilities 
they could be analyzed in an effort to you know, improve the visitor use experience and or to go ahead and minimize visitor use impacts. Um, you know, some of the in, uh, input that we're hoping for from the public tonight is about what types of facilities could be useful or detrimental uh, within the monument. Great, thanks for that, William. Uh, we do have another question from the public. Uh, this comes from Matthew and they asked, with the Nevada State Office announcing they were authoring a single statewide RMP, will that document be the controlling document for Gold Butte National Monument or will this project be superior? I'll go to uh, Stephen for that question, it looks like. No, I'm sorry, actually, Ali, can, we, um, can you give me a second on that? Um, I'm, uh, I need to re, uh, we look at that question just uh, right before I answer it. So just give me one second, please. Hey, Stephanie, while you're doing that, there's another um, question that, that came in from the public and I'm gonna go ahead and address that while you're, you're looking that up. And the, the question really was, you know, how can the public provide input in the implementation plan? And I think there's really three key ways. Um, Principally for us this evening is uh, what's gonna happen at the top of the hour is the opportunity to provide verbal input from the participants here tonight. And then also, um, you know, after that, we're gonna go ahead and you can look at that website there, virtualpublicmeeting.com slash gold dash butte dash national dash monument dash EA. And it explains the other ways in which you can actually provide written comments one key thing is that the comments should be received by March 3rd, 2022, in order to be able to be incorporated into um, the early part of this development and the implementation plan. Thank you, William. Um, we're gonna come back to that other question here in a little bit. Um, and for a minute, how about we discuss um, wilderness areas for me. Um, just, we have a, a couple of wilderness areas in uh, already within the Gold Butte uh, Monument, uh, National Monument. A lot of people always think, uh, are concerned or interested in uh, whether or not we would uh, include more uh, upon the designation. So um, what I would uh, respond to with that is that wilderness areas are congressionally designated and the BLM is mandated to preserve those the wilderness characteristics as they are. However, the BLM does not have authority to create a new wilderness area. So while we have two actual wilderness areas and wilderness study area, um, currently uh, things are intended to stay the way they are for the monument. Allie? Great, thanks for that. Um, are we ready to go back to that original question or do we need a little bit more time to uh, develop a, a good, good solid answer for that? My apologies, we're still, uh, we're still uh, reviewing the answer for that one uh, and drafting it up. I. Um, Stephanie, I've got a couple of things if you want me to go ahead and jump in with a question. Thank you very much. Sure, no problem. One of the key questions that a lot of people have is, you know, really what kinds of input would be most helpful for the BLM during this early information gathering phase? And, you know, this public information forum involves trying to collect information from various folks through the maximum outreach that the BLM can go ahead and, and have. And helpful public input would include um, potential local concerns, barriers, or opportunities you know, related to the implementation plan. As an example, um, the public could provide input about certain types of use within the plan area and um, information about recreational activities and opportunities, or what other factors actually um, really could be uh, particularly helpful for the BLM at this time in the early engagement. Thank you, William. 
really quickly, not really quickly. Uh, I don't want to uh, think that this topic is quick, but um, I wanted to discuss accessibility in the monument area. And um, so a lot of uh, it, a lot of people obviously want to enjoy our uh, resources, our land, public lands out there, and, and they have limitations. And so I want to make sure that it's clear that um, we will consider all accessibility options um, for everyone to ensure that every, that the monument is inclusive of everyone um, when we plan and design uh, facilities uh, for our for our community and the public at large. So uh, this is a is an area that we really need um, a lot of information from the public on to make sure that we're not leaving anything out um, and that we can meet the needs of everyone that wants to uh, come and enjoy our public resource. Uh, I think that we could probably uh, answer the question on that water improvements. Yeah, so we uh, have a question from an anonymous attendee. Uh, and that question is, can you expand on the water improvements mentioned for wildlife? I would be wary of extra facilities just to account for a changing climate other than direct visitor impacts. And that's a, a really good concern of, of everyone's. And I, I know that I mentioned that in the presentation's example. So what we want to make sure is that um, we'll maintain riparian areas to ensure they provide necessary resources to sustain the wildlife habitats. And our, um, our specialists uh, monitor those areas and, um, and any improvements that we would have to put into that area would, would really focus on the already situated uh, um, springs or riparian um, elements that are out there, um, trying to make sure that we minimize the impact uh, for all the areas that we have. So thank you for that question. You know, Stephanie, I wanted to, to note something. It's a question that, that some folks have asked and um, really probably pertains to people who may not be able to um, be here to uh, participate in this forum, but might want to go ahead and, and be able to, to look at a record of it later. And it's just the question, is this session, you know, being recorded? And yes, it is being recorded in its entirety. Um, the BLM is going to be publishing a link to this recorded forum that'd be accessible to everyone in a couple of business days after this forum, so probably two to three business days. So that way you can go ahead and actually share with friends, neighbors, you know, other members of the public or partner organizations, um, the ability to see what the question and answers were, as well as some of the information on how to provide input. And also probably an opportunity to see what the input from some other members of the public are. Excellent. So I, I, I covered already, and I apologize if I missed this um, as we were discussing things. We, um, we may have covered it, but I don't think that it's, uh, we can cover it too many times just to make sure. So um, public providing public input. So know that this is not right here, right now, the last opportunity that the public can provide input. Um, I believe it was asked uh, earlier in the chat and it's to the last opportunity um, to provide input and and that will be March 3rd uh, for this public information period, the, the, the pre-planning um, stage of the implementation plan. Um, but after tonight, you can reach out to the email address or the website. And if you think about something later on that you would really like to, to add or, or um, just multiple questions and there's just not enough time today. You can, you know, feel free to reach out to those uh, areas and go ahead and respond uh, with your question or information, your input. Just remember that this is, this period before March 3rd is, is really truly like the best and most important time to 
provide your input uh, to us. You know, Stephanie, I saw one question that was answered by the BLM in, in the written format here tonight, and I thought it was worth actually highlighting. Um, the, the question was, where can I get the current trail map for off-highway vehicle use in Gold Butte? And then further, will BLM make a proposed map that the public can comment on before it's implemented? The BLM noted that the map of the open roads and trails within the monument actually can be found at the following address. It's never that fun when people go ahead and talk through an URL, but I'm gonna try it. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.blm.gov slash programs slash national dash conservation dash lands slash Nevada slash gold dash butte. And we'll go ahead and try and get that up in the chat so everyone can go ahead and see that. Awesome, thanks for that, William. Looks like we do have another question from the public. Uh, again, this is from an anonymous attendee. And uh, the question is, is there any information on improving the condition of the paved portion of the approach road? Well, that's an excellent question and perfect timing because we're actually out there right now doing a little bit of maintenance on it um, in, con in coordination with the county. But as for the implementation plan side of things, um, I'll just state that the BLM regularly makes repairs to the formerly paved portion of the backcountry byway in conjunction, as I just said, with Clark County. Large scale improvements are being discussed and will be looked at in future planning efforts. The potential for improving the unpaved portion predominantly located within the monument may be analyzed as part of an alternative in the NEPA document. So thank you for your question. Stephanie, I just wanted to go ahead and remind everyone we're coming up on about 20 minutes or so being left in this question and answer portion. And just encourage everyone, I see we have about seven or eight open questions. Um, you can go ahead and ask as many questions as you can now. I'll let everyone know that you can actually continue to submit questions via this Q&A function, even at the top of the hour when we change to the opportunities for verbal input. However, at that time, we won't be allowing um, actual verbal question and answer sessions with the BLM. So really, you can keep asking them, but you're going to have to do it via that uh, question and answer. So the verbal input at the top of the hour um, is the opportunity for those who pre-registered to provide verbal input, as well as those who maybe didn't, but actually have decided during the meeting they'd like to do that at this time. Um, they'll go ahead and, and have an opportunity to do so. So again, we've got about 20 minutes left on this portion of the forum this evening. So I encourage everyone to go ahead and keep, uh, keep sending those questions in. Well, thank you, William. Ali, I think um, in, a, in a minute, we're gonna uh, go to the Las Vegas Resource Management Plan question um, and uh, give a little uh, further discussion on that one. I think we're probably pretty ready for that one, if you'd like. All right. Uh, this question comes from Cheryl, and they asked, is the LVRMP, which is Las Vegas Resource Management Plan, available for review, and does it address the Gold Butte National Monument? Good question. So the Las Vegas Resource Management Plan, as with all planning documents, are available uh, for review. It's currently available and does address the Gold Butte planning area within the resource management plan. Thank you. Stephanie, as you go ahead and get ready, um, I just wanted to go ahead and, and note a question here and one of the folks had, had asked basically, uh, you know, does the BLM actually complete surveys or go ahead and, and, 
in any way collect data to track the number of people who used the primary gold butte road. And the moderator's response really was that, you know, visitor use data actually is maintained and collected regularly. And this includes travel along certain sections of the Gold Butte backcountry byway, i.e. Gold Butte Road. Brilliant. You know, we have uh, some great, great participants today, and I apologize that I'm not able to answer some of these questions so quick, as uh, we're just trying to really review them and, and make sure that we can, uh, which one has uh, a great uh, question, which they all do. Um, so it's, uh, it's taking me a minute to get in there and figure out what question uh, I've got a good answer for, I'm just kidding. And I have an answer for uh, did, um, on our next one. So I uh, just bear with me for a minute, folks, and, um, and we'll get there. So I appreciate your time on this. That's a beautiful segue, Stephanie, because uh, you know I've got um, a response to members of the public who are wondering about running out of time. Not so much the BLM running out of time, but you know what happens if they run out of time? And we just want to let you know members of the public know their questions are important, you know, and really uh, questions as well as the input that we'll get at the top of the hour really can offer different perspectives and and help guide some of the way that this implementation plan goes forward. And you know, if you don't have an opportunity, or sometimes as we all recognize, you know, we go ahead and we leave the meeting and we think, wow, that would have been the best question to ask. I didn't think of it. Um, go ahead and email this question to the implementation plan email address. It's BLM underscore NV underscore LVFO, Las Vegas field office, underscore Gold Butte at BLM.gov so that the BLM can further review that. And you know this is super important to the BLM. And in the same way that we're saying that you can go ahead and continue to ask questions, even while other people are providing verbal input, this is that other opportunity for you to go ahead and um, actually, you know, continue to go ahead and ask these questions later. Excellent. And I think that, um, Allie, I think we're trying to, uh, I think we're trying to get to Mr. Um, to Danny's question about camping and water. Great, yes, I do have that question pulled up. Uh, this question comes from Danny, and they ask, my question is about water. When I camp in Gold Butte, I bring water for cooking, and I bring water for my horses. Is the plan open to improving access to water, or is the plan dedicated to eliminating all existing and historical water improvements? So this is an excellent question all around for what we're here today to do. We're here to gather public information, public input about what you, the public, want to see, what your concerns are, and what resources you want to look at, maintain, manage, etc. So the input received from the public input period is critical to help inform the BLM's decision on potential alternatives for the implementation of management actions to include the camping and water facilities and anything that's currently in place uh, within the monument. Your input regarding access to water for recreation uses is important. So if that's something that is concerning to you besides right now and in this question that you just posed, make sure that you follow up with a comment in the, uh, on the email or the website about your concerns and what specifically you're concerned about with water. That's what you are interested in. Thank you very much for your question, Dan. Stephanie, you got any other questions in the hopper you want to go ahead and answer live? I, I've got a topic that I'd like to go ahead and discuss. Why don't you go ahead and discuss your topic and we'll uh, get ready with another one. Excellent. As you're queuing that up, um, you know, one of the questions that people had asked was about uh, reservations. And they really just you know, said, you know, are, are they gonna go ahead and require reservations to use the area? And the response is, is that you know, the, the implementation of reservation system 
may be necessary at select sites if or when high visitor use uh, is, is there to go ahead and, and make sure that the resources need to be protected or to go ahead and, and minimize user conflicts. However, if sites like these are identified, the, the reservation system um, could be considered during the planning process and would be analyzed therein. And it looks like Stephanie's further considering some other information. So I'm gonna go ahead and unless you're ready to jump back in, Stephanie, I'm gonna go to the sort of the, the sister question about reservations and fees. And uh, really- I do a disservice to not go to the sister question. Excellent. So uh, the question is really, again, similar to the reservation system and would the BLM implement one? Then? is will they go ahead and implement a fee station, you know, use permits or other use fees. And, you know, at this time, the BLM is not considering implementing collections of amenity fees or access or use of recreation areas within the monument, but that could actually come up as part of this early, uh, early input process. And it may be evaluated during the planning process. You know, that's important for the public to go ahead and provide their input, you know, about this kind of uh, visitor management instruments. And it's the kind of information that at the top of the hour, we hope if you have thoughts about this, that you'd go ahead and provide some of your input then. So Stephanie, back to you. Excellent. Allie, we've got another one uh, ready to go. Mr. Davis, I think maybe. Great, yes. Yeah. So this question comes from Don Davis. And they ask, what, if any, are restrictions for parking horse trailers along the roadways? Also, will any future designated parking areas have specific horse trailer parking areas? So much uh, very similar to the previous answer that I had, your public input is important here. If horse trailer parking is important to you, then we need to, you need to speak on it. Um, the input received during this public input period, including input regarding horse trailer parking, is critical to help inform the BLM's decision on potential alternatives uh, for the implementation of the management actions for the monument. So again, reiterating the point, this is your, your time to speak, uh, your time to inform us of what you want. And if it's horse trailer parking, please let us know. Thank you. So Stephanie, one of the other questions that, that we had previously submitted is asking a question about, are there plans for monument expansion in the future? And it's an important question actually. And currently there are no known plans to expand the monument. And the Gold Butte, Gold Butte National Monument's boundaries were actually established through the presidential proclamation and also any changes to the established monument would require changes through legislative means, i.e. the BIA or the BLM could not actually go ahead and just proclaim a larger monument. Excellent. No, it's really important that uh, we discuss this moving forward. Um, how about... No, I might need another minute here, I'm sorry. Not a problem at all. This is a great time for me to go ahead and remind everyone we're coming up on 10 minutes left in the Q&A session. Um, and then again, at the top of the hour, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have an opportunity uh, for folks to provide verbal input. Um, it looks like we, uh, as of the time of the start of this meeting, had about 20 individuals who had registered and indicated they wanted to provide verbal input. Uh, there will be opportunities for those who did not register to provide verbal input to do so as well. Um, we're trying to set it up so we can listen to everyone who's participating here. We appreciate everyone's uh, input and participation in both of these portions of the forum. Excellent. Thank you for that, William. Allie, um, you, would you like to talk about Friends of Gold Butte for a second? Yes. So it looks like we have a question from Elaine. And they ask, how is the volunteers, meaning Friends of Gold Butte, 
work fitting into this program? Excellent. So the BLM has a memorandum of understanding mm -hmm, uh, with the Friends of Gold View. And through that memorandum, uh, the BLM will continue to work with Friends to implement on the ground actions determined through the final plan. So they've been an excellent partner uh, over the time and we continue, we will continue to honor that memorandum of understanding as we move forward. Thank you for that question. Um, one more minute. So Stephanie, one of the one of the questions we also received uh, previously from members of the public is, are there going to be any recreational amenities added in the wilderness? And um, you know, the BLM, they're mandated to go ahead and preserve or enhance wilderness character and where potential recreation amenities could help the BLM with this mandate, they actually will consider them. So that'd be something that actually uh, folks can go ahead and provide verbal or written input on. And again, I'll remind folks, um, you know, as we're coming up on the top of the hour and the opportunity to provide verbal input, if you visit the website, that you see at the bottom of your screen, virtualpublicmeeting.com slash gold dash butte dash national dash monument dash EA. Um, you can go ahead and find the ways to go ahead and provide written input as well. And we'll go ahead and talk about that later as we go into the remainder of the forum. Stephanie, looks like we have a, another question from the public. Uh, this question comes from Ben Roberts. And they asked, will this implementation plan be an amendment to the Las Vegas Resource Management Plan? I believe you are on mute as well. Thank you. So we touched on this a little bit before, and I'll, I'll go ahead and reiterate um, that part of the implementation plan is, is for us to take the management directions and of the Las Vegas Resource Management Plan and uh, focus them on gold new activities and areas resources. And so the second part of that is once we do that and determine, go through the alternatives and determine um, what we're going to look at for this implementation plan, then we need to determine if an amendment is going to be needed for the Las Vegas RMP resource management plan. So it's kind of a step-by-step -step process. Uh, and, um, and if we need to, then, um, then that will follow on. Thank you. Stephanie, as you're going ahead and get ready to answer another question live, I'm going to jump back in and, and ask uh, or answer a question about, you know, will there be safety improvements? And, um, you know, the BLM's response to that is as part of the implementation plan, you know, the BLM anticipates that there may be more specific management strategies related to public safety and law enforcement to better protect the resources and visiting public. So Stephanie, also, as you go ahead and, and continue to get ready, um, I'm going to answer a question about OHV use that someone had, had submitted. And the question from the public was, will I still be able to use my off-highway vehicle on all the roads and trails in the monument? And will there be separate trails designated for various recreational uses? And, and the BLM's response to that was, you know, OHV use is authorized on routes designated within the 2008 travel management plan in the monument area. Um, the BLM does not intend to change these route designations unless they determined that that's in the interest of public safety, or also it could be that it enhances the protections of resources within the monument. So the routes that would be designated as closed or for limited, limited use 
those would actually be restored and maintained for that designation. All right, looks like we have another question from a member of the public. This question comes from Don, and they asked, will any future restrictions to access portions of the monument be decided with public input or solely decided by the BLM? Well, that might be the question of the day, right, Don? Thank you very much for your question. So the various types of recreational activities allowed within the monument are an important component to satisfying the visitor's experience. Retaining access to these uh, recreational activities will be a primary focus during the planning process, and much of the plan will be developed around this. Providing input about the level and types of access desired within the monument would be helpful at this time. So the crux of the matter is, tell us what you want, and we'll develop it or, or to use it to inform the implementation plan. All right. Thank you, Don. Stephanie, I'm just going to remind everyone, I've been sort of bringing everyone um, up to speed on this as we got closer to the top of the hour. But when we actually go ahead and get to seven o'clock, um, we're going to go ahead and stop the portion of the question and answer session where the BLM will have the opportunity to answer things live. Um, they will continue to answer them in the Q&A dialog box. And what we're going to go ahead and do is shift over so that members of the public have the opportunity to provide verbal input. And we will not be having uh, members of the public at that time, you know, asking verbal questions of the BLM and the BLM answering it. This is really the opportunity for everyone to go ahead and, and get their time to speak and, and, and let the BLM know what their input is on the implementation plan. So we have about four minutes left, and then we'll go ahead and shift over to that. Thank you. We're looking at um, um, uh, discussion um, just kind of going through uh, one of the questions there and summarizing what it's, uh, what it's asking. And uh, we'll be ready for that one in just a moment. Excellent. And my reminder is as much for the, the BLM and the moderators that in three minutes, we'll go ahead and be over with that. So it's possible that um, we may not get to that one to be able to answer it live. So that's okay. Um, you know, if you could squeeze it in, I totally encourage that. But we want to make sure that there's ample opportunity for, for all members of the public to go ahead and provide verbal input at the top of the hour. So if you can go ahead and, and try to answer that one live, that's great. Otherwise, we're looking forward to hearing from the public in a little bit. All right, William, thank you. Um, so, Ali, we've got the uh, question there uh, from Matthew, I think it is. Yes, correct. Yeah, we have a question from Matthew, and they asked, with Goldview National Monument having 350 miles of motorized trails and roads and being the recipient for the Nevada OHB grant funding in the 2018-2019 cycle requiring, quote, allow for motorized OHV access to those facilities for 25 years, end quote, and agreed to by the then acting BLM Las Vegas Field Office Manager, Mar Smith, will this plan continue to honor that agreement? Excellent question, Matthew, except I think you left off 22 miles of open uh, designated routes, but just to, um, so you're aware or recall, a travel management plan was implemented in 2008 uh, that included all of the ACACs that are now the Goldview National Monument. This travel management plan included an inventory of all routes within that and is now known as the Goldview National Monument. And that travel management plan was codified by the presidential proclamation. And so those routes that were uh, listed in the travel management plan as used for uh, off highway vehicle use will uh, still remain uh, as such. Thank you for your question. Stephanie, 
that pretty much brings us to the top of the hour, unless we have, you know, the world's shortest question and answer. So maybe with that, we can go ahead and I'll take a different position in my chair and settle in for, for the next hour. Um, and just note, that's the end of the opportunities to ask uh, questions and have the BLM answer them live. Um, the BLM will not be answering questions live when we go into the verbal input uh, portion of the forum right now. But just reminding everyone, there's a couple of different ways you can go ahead and continue to answer your Q&As or have the BLM answer them. You can continue to type them in the Q&A box. The BLM will um, have their moderators work on that even during the verbal input. And further, you can go ahead and actually um, send your questions to the project email. And we'll go ahead and we'll look at that email later. So with that, could we go on to slide 19, Allie? Perfect. How are we gonna go ahead and, and have members of the public provide verbal input? So as I sort of mentioned about 40 minutes ago, we're gonna go ahead and um, go in the order of the folks who registered to provide input. So when you, you went, and, uh, went to Zoom and registered and indicated you wanted to provide input, that put you in a queue. And basically we're gonna go ahead and go down that queue. So when we go down there, um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna call out your name ask you to use the raise hand feature that's down at the bottom right on your Zoom toolbar there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll open up your microphone and we'll ask you to unmute. Um, further, if we have participants are gonna be on the phone, you can go ahead and raise your hand with star nine. Um, as you'll see on the next slide, we'll see a timer. It'll display uh, the time on your screen and it'll basically allow you to go ahead. Whoops, um, can we go back? Oh, I'm not sure what's happening there, but we'll get that screen share back in just a moment. Um, so basically what it is, is that you'll have two minutes to go ahead and provide your verbal input. And then that timer will click down um, at 30 seconds, you'll see it flash red. And then we'll go ahead and I'll probably jump in um, right at the very end to remind you that the end of your comments are about to be coming. Um, I think we may have some technical hiccups in the background, uh, but I'll go ahead and I think I can probably, whoops, here we are. Um, note here, the final bullet, uh, I thought I was gonna be able to do it from memory, but I actually, I missed one. Uh, just noting everyone, um, your verbal input will actually be included in the project record. So can we go on to slide 20? Perfect. All right, we're gonna be here for the next hour. So the BLM, obviously we're here. We wanna go ahead and we wanna hear from all members of the Republic, uh, Republic, public, and out of respect for the participation of all the members of the public and the desire to hear their input, we're gonna go ahead and use some guidelines. Please stay within your allotted time. This is really so that everyone gets an opportunity to speak. Ask that everyone is respectful of others, refrain from profanity, and we reserve the right to go ahead and mute your microphone and move on to someone else if the guidelines aren't followed. Um, wanted to note, if you did not get the opportunity to speak um, or you want to provide more input, you can go ahead and again, um, visit the, the website um, with more information on how to provide further input at the bottom of your screen. So as you can see on the right, we have the 10 people who were the first uh, registrants to provide input this evening. And with this, I am going to go ahead. I'm going to act, ask Rick Schmals to go ahead and raise his hand. And I see Patrick Donnelly has actually raised their hand. Patrick, I'm going to be asking people in sequence to do it as reflected on the screen up there. So I'm likely to go ahead and lower your hand and we'll have an opportunity for you to raise it later. So Rick, can you go ahead and raise your hand if you're here? I see you here on the screen. There we go. So Rick, we're going to go ahead and we're going to ask you to unmute. All right, Rick. Hey, your mic is open. Go ahead, Rick. Um, I didn't have any verbal comment to provide. I submitted a written question earlier that was addressed. 
Okay, well, excellent. Rick, thanks for being here tonight for your participation. Right. So I'd like to go, go ahead and we'll close your mic now, Rick. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go on to Matthew Giltner. And Matthew, can you raise your hand? There we go. Matthew, I see you there. We're gonna go ahead and ask you to unmute here in a moment, and then you'll be able to provide some input. Hi, Matthew, hey, welcome. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Matthew Giltner. I am the Executive Director of Nevada Offer Association. We represent the owners of the 55,000 plus registered recreational OHVs in the state of Nevada. Uh, earlier tonight, uh, well, two things. Uh, we don't have an answer yet as to what which uh, resource management plan is going to be the controlling document for Gold Butte. Um, I will have my uh, associate director follow up with an email with that question um, because it looks like we're not gonna be able to uh, research and chase down the answer tonight. So I will have uh, Kim Mercia my associate director uh, reach out to you via the email. Uh, that being said, uh, the one thing that was brought up earlier tonight, which I thought was a, a missed opportunity, I, I can't remember who was talking about it, but they were talking about invasive species. Uh, the OHV community is, um, well, <laughs> not very good at, uh, at uh, limiting uh, movement of invasive species, plant species in particular, obviously. Uh, and I would offer that it's always a good idea as you're working on these projects to include a wash station where the OHVs, when they're leaving the National Monument, in this case, would have the opportunity to quickly rinse off their vehicles before they head on out or before they head in, because it does help reduce the transmittal of uh, some of those bugs and weeds they can track in. Uh, again, thank you very much for uh, inviting us to this tonight, and I appreciate it. And I'll yield the rest of my time to whoever else, whoever else has a question. Thanks for participating tonight, Matthew. So next up, we have Catherine McQuaid. Catherine, I see that you're here tonight. Can you go ahead and raise your hand? The lower right on the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. Hi, Catherine. We're going to go ahead and ask you to unmute. And then you should be able to go ahead and provide your input. Hi, Catherine. I really, hello. I really didn't have a, uh, any comments at this time. I just wanted to leave the options open, but uh, I, I found the uh, session very uh, useful at this time. Thank you. Great. And, you know, Catherine, there will be another opportunity. I think, as I mentioned before, we're going to go through the people who registered to provide input. Then we're going to go to the folks who didn't register, but would still like to provide input. Then we'll go back and open up to everyone. You may yet be inspired to go ahead and provide input by listening to other members of the public. So there will be the opportunity for that. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and ask uh, Adam Bronstein to go ahead and, and raise his hand. Adam, I see you're here. You're already at the top. All you got to do is raise your hand, and then we'll go ahead and ask you to... Uh, Unmute your microphone. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam, your mic's live. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, my name is Adam Bronson. I'm the Oregon Nevada Director with Western Watersheds Project. Um, just want to comment on the continued trespass uh, cattle grazing situation on the monument. I've not seen that uh, discussed here at all. And uh, this needs to be addressed by the BLM. It's been going on for 30 years. It um, delegitimizes you as a regulatory agency on behalf of the public and uh, it needs to be addressed. Also, um, as Patrick Donnelly has noted, uh, you guys must develop a monument management plan. This implement implementation plan of a previous RMP is insufficient. And I look forward to continuing on with this process. That's all I have at this time. Thank you. Thanks for participation, Adam, and your input. So next up, Amber Hughes. Amber, you're pretty close to the top of the list here. It's very convenient for me. If you just go ahead and raise your hand, we'll ask you to unmute your microphone. Hi, Amber. We're going to go ahead. And your mic should be live. There we go. Hi, Amber. Welcome. Hi. I, uh, I don't really have any questions because I whether your, uh, the EA was an amendment to the resource management plan. Hey, Amber, could I ask you maybe just to 
move a little bit closer to your microphone. You're really uh, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Sorry, I, my computer is funny that way. Um, oh, I don't really have any questions at this moment because um, I, you've already discussed how the EA is in relation to the RMP, whether it's an amendment. Um, and I'm not, I, I guess I, I'm not 100% sure if that's the case, but I'm, you know, I'm just also willing to just wait and see what y'all um, provide to the public. And then also there was a, a lot of discussion about the travel management plan and if that was going to change with this EA, which it doesn't sound like it will. So I, I don't really have major questions at this particular point in time. Okay. Well, we appreciate you being here, participating and listening and probably providing input in another fashion. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to Brian Dixon. Brian, I see you there. Hey, you've raised your hand. We're gonna ask you to unmute. Hi, Brian, good evening. Hi there, thank you very much. Um, I'd asked earlier, what is BLM doing to eliminate trespass grazing, for example, by the Bundys? And you replied, questions regarding trespass grazing in the monument are outside of the scope of this project, that there is currently no plan to change the management direction of grazing within the planning area. But I was not asking about when and where to allow new grazing, but how to enforce, that is, implement the grazing management that is already allowed. So I don't understand the difference between management and implementation. Could you clarify that for us? Brian, I'll just go ahead and remind you that, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, this is not the time to go ahead and have a verbal question and answer session. So this is the opportunity for verbal input. You've still got time. You can go ahead and you can provide more input later. So I'm just going to have to ask you to just provide any input that you have now, or further, you can submit a follow-up question uh, to the email or via the, the web address. Um, you want to provide no, I, was, I was just hoping that you could clarify that as just part of the um, analysis team. So that's okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So it looks up next, we have Ben Roberts. And I do not see Ben as be, oh, there you are, Ben. I'm sorry. I was looking in the wrong spot. Ben, could you raise your hand? And Ben, if you are here, oh, there we go. Hi, Ben, we're gonna ask you to unmute your microphone and then your mic will be live. Hi, Ben, good evening. Hi, I uh, didn't actually have a question, so I don't know why it showed up. I, I submitted my comment um, in the question and answer period, thank you. Okay, no problem. We appreciate you being here all the same. So, I see that uh, Josh Wilson had raised his hand and Josh, we're gonna go ahead and go through the registrants in the order that they um, indicated they would like to provide uh, uh, verbal input. So we're gonna go ahead and lower your hand for the moment. That way I can kind of just track the folks as we're going through the sequence, but we will have an opportunity for you to actually ask a question or, or excuse me, not ask a question, but provide input later. Um, the next individual on my list is Chris Gorzalski. Chris, are you here? And could you raise your hand? Hi, Chris. We're going to go ahead and ask you to unmute your microphone. Okay. Hi, good evening. You're live. All right. So I did have a question about the borough population, and you guys answered that with 22 to 90 that you thought was in the management plan. Um, I We hike a lot in the backcountry, especially in the southern area. And I do believe that the population is much larger than that. And I would like to see if uh, there could possibly be a BLM and citizen kind of survey effort to see what the um, population actually is and their impact as well as their health. That's Thank all. You. Excellent. Thank you for your input tonight, Chris, and your participation. So we've got just two more on the first 10 that uh, registered to provide input. The next individual up is Jim Boone. Jim, are you here and can you raise your hand? Oh, 
All right, I do not see a Jim Boone at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Uh, Josh Wilson, Josh, are you here? Oh, there you are, Josh, you probably were, I apologize for kicking you to the curb earlier. You can raise your hand now. Hi, Josh, we're gonna go ahead and ask you to, uh, to unmute your microphone. I have learned to unmute my microphone. Can you hear me? Yep. Very good. Well, I was really hoping to get a little bit of conversation, but since I don't have that opportunity, I'll just bring up my concerns and uh, at least they can be written, uh, as you said in the, in the record. So my, uh, my concern is about genetic engineering uh, in the public lands. And uh, let's see, I'm mostly concerned that recently APHIS, uh, which is a part of APHIS WS under USDA, um, has requested guidance for regulatory status of 7 CRF Part 340. Now, eight people in the entire country made a comment on the deregulation status of genetic engineering for stats, stacked traits. Stacked traits would be something like making a plant or a bush drought resistant and uh, it looks like they're favoring their proposed rule of not what, uh, 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 having no requirements of labeling genetic engineering. And what I saw in BLM 2.0 back in 2016, 15, was that they were gonna use science and all their uh, uh, science, you know, to hit their restoration goals. And I was able to sit in in some stakeholder companies meetings and hear how they had liked the idea of genetically engineering traits to make them drought resistant to use it in lease agreements on public lands. My question is, can I write me a conversation that BLM this time will take seriously and looking at that uh, <clears throat> concern and, and doing it in a public forum. Maybe tomorrow you could look into it. Today they answered my question with the national seed strategy. So I will reach out to them and see uh, if they have any requirements. But from my understanding, they wouldn't. And that's a concern. So I know you can't answer my question, but you really need to look into the way technology is, uh, is going here. I'm going to pull up some of the concerning stuff. William, you're on mute. I apologize. I knew this was gonna happen at least once in this meeting, might as well get it over with now. So um, Josh, you know, that was perfect timing to go ahead and sort of wrap up that, that portion of input. And I think we'll have an opportunity later for you to go ahead and, and provide some additional input if you like. And in the meantime, as, as Teresa is, is changing us out to the next 10 registrants, just want to mind everyone, if you don't get the chance to speak, you want to um, maybe think about it um, after considering and hearing from other members of the public here and provide more input, you can visit the project website that's at the bottom of the screen. And that will go ahead and provide um, the other ways that you can go ahead and provide input. So, with that, um, looks like we've got another seven folks who actually had indicated they wanted to provide input. Um, the next individual up is Mark Rollins. Mark, are you here and can raise your hand? Excellent. Mark, we're gonna ask you to unmute your microphone and you'll be able to go ahead and join us and provide some input. So uh, as one of the couple of private landowners in the Gold Butte National Monument, um, we drive that Gold Butte Road a lot, and uh, I was 15 or 16 when they put that road in, and they just put asphalt on whatever was there, and so Mark, uh, I'm not hearing you anymore. Is there something that's changed in your situation with your microphone? sitting on sand and so i'm really hoping 
that and uh, we build the front end. We have to rebuild the front end on on our vehicles at least one tw once or twice a year uh, because that road is so difficult to to travel on. Um, uh, and 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 I want to make it clear that whatever solution comes up with for the Gold Butte Road should not be built in such a way that <clears throat> excessive speeds are permitted. And I'm I'm sure there's lots of ways to to do that um, uh, to keep the excessive speeds down, but. Uh, but something needs to be done about that road because it is Mark, I'm not hearing you now. I'm sure I'm not sure what other folks are hearing or not, but it seems like you got cut off there. Um, we, again, will be able to probably have enough time to come back to you if you want to provide more input later. Um, so next up, we have Michelle Burkett. Michelle, are you here and you want to go ahead and raise your hand? Hi, Michelle. We're going to ask you to unmute your microphone and then your microphone will be live. Hi, Michelle. Whoop. Just unmuted for a moment. There we go. Hi, Michelle. Hi. I have a small comment. I have submitted some written ideas, but a lot of good things go on at Gold Butte. A lot of um, people visit and I don't know of too bad of a safety record out there. With all disrespect, I like the road the way it is because it does help people to drive slower. I like to share the road and share the back country. I encourage management to look at other regions uh, to compare what we've been doing in what we call the back country and the front country. We've invited a lot of visitation and I think people are enjoying Gold Butte. I look for a small footprint wherever I go. I'm looking for solitude. And of course, this is a very special place where, there, where the Mojave Desert and um, Great Basin come together. And so there's a lot of fragile ecosystems. I wanna move slow on the implementation plans and just be safe out there. So thanks for your time tonight. Michelle, thank you for your input. So next up we have Patrick Donnelly. I'm gonna go ahead and, hi Patrick, I see you raising your hand there. You're gonna be asked to unmute your microphone. Hi Patrick, welcome. Hello, thank you. I'm Patrick Donnelly. I'm Great Basin Director with the Center for Biological Diversity. I have to say how disappointed I am in tonight's presentation. I was all set to provide a bunch of productive input on toilets and parking areas and concentrating impact, but instead we've got BLM up to their usual tricks, their usual shenanigans, trying to dodge the law and avoid doing things the right way. The answer about the implementation plan is unacceptable. The existing Las Vegas Resource Management Plan is not a valid set of management directions for a national monument. <clears throat> we already feel that the extreme delay in moving forward with this plan constitutes a legally actionable, unreasonable delay. Further delay, for instance, by moving forward with an inadequate plan that does not qualify as the presidentially mandated management plan, will only serve to enhance the claim that BLM is unreasonably delaying the required monument management plan. <clears throat> the proclamation wasn't a suggestion. It wasn't asking. It was an instruction from the President of the United States that a management plan must be produced. The Las Vegas Resource Management Plan is dated to 1998, 24 years ago. Gold Butte National Monument is not mentioned in the Las Vegas Resource Management Plan. And there is no management direction given to prioritize the protection of the objects for which the monument was designated. The travel management plan is also out of date, and when it was done, it was not designed to protect the objects for which Cold Butte National Monument was designated. That's why we need a monument management plan. A monument isn't just a line on a map, it's a mandate to protect the objects for which the monument was designated. If your RMP doesn't specify what those objects are and how you're going to protect them, it's not a valid RMP for the monument. 
honestly, this one's easy. It's a gimme. <laughs> you guys just follow the law, do a monument management plan. Most people will support it. And in the meantime, it's illegitimate to use the Las Vegas RMP as a basis for your management actions in Gold Butte. I would highly encourage you not to play hanky panky with NEPA and just do a management plan like you're legally required to do. Thank you. Thanks for your input, Patrick. Patrick, if you want to go ahead, you had to um, you stop it there at two minutes. We'll have opportunity probably to go ahead and get back to, to folks who have already presented comments and um, you have more opportunities later, we hope. So I see that there uh, is no individual here named Chris Schmant, but I will go ahead, um, ask them. If you are here, you can raise your hand. I also similarly look for Cheryl Schmalls, and I actually, let's see here. Cheryl, you are here. It's Steve, who's actually, I believe, not here. Hi, Cheryl, we're gonna ask you to unmute your microphone. Good evening, Cheryl. Good evening, thank you. Um, I would like to provide some input from an equestrian uh, point of view. Uh, I am an equestrian day rider and a horse camper. And um, as was mentioned in the question and answer section, we are very interested in horse trailer parking. Um, I recently came out to Gold Butte and did a weekend camp out and we, um, half half mile to the left of the Whitney Pockets uh, trailhead. And one of the reasons that we did that um, was because the Whitney Pocket trailhead um, is very popular with the OHV people, which is fine. Um, we ran into some of them, not literally, but figuratively, and they were very, very nice. Um, but we kind of want to keep the equestrians and the OHV a little bit separate as far as what trails were on, what roads were on. Uh, if you know anything about horses, they can get a little bit freaked out about loud vehicles. So some of my input is horse trailer parking, designated horse campground, including water access and possibly even um, like self-serve stalls. Um, I am interested with a large horse trailer as um, a rock and roll show and half of the things that I have put away in the horse trailer end up on the floor by the time I get there. Um, I'm also very um, interested in unrestricted travel use within the monument for horses. That is very important to us. Um, horses are environmental friendly and uh, we would be very disappointed if our... Um, and I appreciate this opportunity to give that input. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Cheryl. So I'm looking for Steve Francis. I don't see anyone named Steve Francis here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, and let Steve know if, if you've somehow registered under a different name, um, I apologize. You can go ahead and raise your hand at any time. But now I'd like to go ahead and pivot. We've gone through um, the folks who have uh, pre-registered to provide verbal input and open it up to anyone who's here tonight as an attendee who has not had the opportunity um, yet to provide input. I wanna prioritize those so we get the diversity of input from the public. Um, please go ahead and raise your hand and then I'll go down the list. And as I'm waiting for folks to go ahead and raise their hand, um, we'll give it just about a minute and then we'll go ahead and actually go to open it back up to any uh, in attendees who are here tonight that can provide further input. So while we're waiting, um, I just wanna go ahead and remind everyone, again, um, this will go ahead and go until the end of the hour um, for the opportunity for verbal input. Um, for those who didn't get to speak, um, you know, or maybe don't want to speak in this forum, but do wanna provide input, um, please visit the project website that we have listed below on the screen for more information. That's virtualpublicmeeting.com slash gold dash butte dash national dash monument dash ea and with that i think we've had enough time waiting for all those who may have uh, wanted to provide comments but weren't part of the registrants i'm just going to open it up if anyone else wants to provide verbal input i'd encourage you to go ahead and raise your hand at this time 
and it's open for everyone. So I see here we have Patrick. Um, Patrick, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to ask you to unmute your microphone and welcome back. Thank you again, Patrick Donnelly, Great Basin Director with the Center for Biological Diversity. I'm just going to cover a couple of topics I missed in my first go round. Um, one is, uh, you know, I think sometimes uh, groups with a reputation like ours might sound like we're opposed to visitor amenities. Uh, however, I don't know if folks have been out to Gold Butte lately, but there's a major human waste problem. Like we have, we have attracted people to these places with our campaigns to protect them, and now we have to deal with those people, and that means we need toilets. Like I think human waste is a major issue in Gold Butte, and so I would really encourage strong development of alternatives that have uh, accommodations for, in particular, human waste. Um, and other visitor accommodations that are going to concentrate impact. Right now, we have a lot of dispersed impact, and that's causing more and more impacts. You know, a, a national monument isn't just plain old BLM land. It's not just casual use, dispersed recreation. You know, there is intensive use of these places, and uh, that 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 requires intensive management. So I think, um, you know, from our point of view. Uh, the, the more ability BLM has to harden those surfaces, to create more durable surfaces, to create the types of uh, resistance to those impacts and toilets, you know, that can absorb those impacts, I think is going to be beneficial for, for Gold Butte. With regard to water infrastructure, you know, uh, uh, the BLM is under no obligation to indulge the fantasies of the Virgin Valley Water District. There's no water in Nickel Creek. Like last summer, it was dead dry. I mean, completely dry. And uh, the idea that this plan is going to create some system whereby VVWD can develop these ludicrous water rights they have rights to uh, up in Gold Butte, which are going to ruin uh, some of the objects for which the monument was designated is silly. So, you know, I think there's going to be real problems with if VVWD's crazy water development uh, ends up in this, in this plan. And finally, I'll just say, you know, any management out there in Gold Butte is rendered uh, the, the legitimacy of it is called into question by the presence of Clive and Bundy and his illegal cows that BLM and the Department of Justice still have not done anything about. So until you deal with the cows, it's going to be hard to justify having a management plan. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Patrick. So it looks like we have uh, Josh Wilson has actually raised his hand again. Josh, I see you, and we're going to ask you to unmute your microphone. You can provide more input. Welcome. Yeah, all right. Well, I didn't realize we can push the button twice like Patrick did. Um, I wanted to say something contrary to Patrick's uh, thought on the NEPA process. The NEPA process is by far the most important system that we have in place uh, to protect the end of, to protect the public, to make it a... Uh, you know, open and 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 uh, so you can see it transparent, so we can do the, what you guys are doing today. So I applaud the BLM using the NEPA Act. Um, so I just wanted to case <clears throat> Patrick's thought on bypassing the NEPA pro uh, project is absolutely preposterous. Okay. Um, <clears throat> William, are you able to have somebody get back to me on some uh, some conversations I could have by phone, or should I just call uh, the Las Vegas management plan? I guess I'll talk to you that later. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, Josh, for your input. So uh, as I think we went ahead and, and mentioned previously, um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask Ali, can you go back to a slide that actually shows me the email because Josh did ask the question about, you know, how can he, he sort of ask questions of the BLM? Thank you. So I'm just going to go ahead and note um, this is uh, one way, and we'll look at this slide again in, in a little bit um, to go ahead and provide further input. But you could also go ahead and if you had follow on questions that you're thinking of, such as Josh mentioned, you can go ahead and actually email them to the uh, BLM underscore NV underscore LVFO underscore Gold Butte at BLM.gov. So with that, I think we can go ahead and we can go back one slide. I see that Don Davis is here and has raised his hand. Allie, can we go back one slide? Or whomever is actually running the PowerPoint. There we go. 
Hi, Don. Looks like your microphone is unmuted. Great. We saved that step. Welcome. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, first of all, I just want to tell you that I, I think in general, it must be very difficult to work for the BLM. It's like being locked up in a building with 14 different lynch mobs outside, each wanting to string you up for a different reason. Uh, I, I, I applaud how difficult it must be to try to appease so many differing views. Um, so I, I, I understand the, how, how problematic it must be to try to work out something knowing that nothing is going to work for everybody. So I just wanted to get that out of the way and tell you that I do, I do appreciate all that you try to do to make things as good as you can for everyone. Um, having said that, I will speak from my particular viewpoint, which is as an equestrian, I've been riding horses on public lands for well over 30 years. I spent the last 25 years riding Gold Butte area frequently. Um, and I do want to see traditional stock usage uh, maintained and open and considerations to that point. Actually, I don't want to see this um, lands overdeveloped. Um, if you put in water, uh, water availability for everybody and overdevelop things, um, you may very well create something that creates such an option um, that's so desirable that you simply overwhelm the resource. So. I'm not opposed to the road staying in the condition it is for the time being, as you very carefully develop the resources and parking. And of course, it does need toilets. Uh, that is an issue. Uh, again, from my standpoint, I'm concerned about traditional access being maintained by very environmentally friendly horses and horseback riders. But I just did, again, want to compliment you on the difficult situation you find yourselves in trying to meet your federal mandates and listen to the public at the same time. So that's about my two cents worth. Perfect timing. Um, thank you for your input, Don. And more generally, I'll go ahead and thank all the participants here tonight, whether you provided input or actually um, if you're just here participating and, uh, you know, maybe ask a question and, you um, Everyone, uh, we I know the BLM and, and EMPSI as well, both uh, appreciate your participation. And I'll sort of remind everyone, um, at this point, we're closing in on uh, just about 18 minutes left um, before the end of the hour and the end of the time where folks can go ahead and provide verbal input. Um, I'll remind everyone, if you don't get a chance to speak or you wanna go ahead and provide more input, um, there's other ways you can do it. You can go ahead and do it via email at the email there on the screen. I just read it out recently, so I'm not going to go ahead and subject myself to that again. But um, you can also go ahead and provide it by mail to the address there. And we'll look back at this, uh, at this slide in a moment. And it's worth just noting that there is more information on all of this and how to provide input um, at the website submitted there. So I'll go ahead and encourage anyone um, in that time remaining to us, the, the 18 minutes remaining, if you wanna go ahead, raise your hand, um, whether you've spoken already this evening or not, we encourage you to provide verbal input. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and we will uh, go back to that other slide and remind people of the other ways to go ahead and provide input. And we'll just wait and, and go ahead and, uh, sort of intermittently go back and forth and remind folks of, of how they can provide input while waiting to see if anyone else raises their hands. So with that, thank you actually, Allie, for going back to that slide. Looks like Josh is back up and ready again with the raised hand. Josh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna ask you to unmute your microphone and welcome you back again. Thanks for participating tonight. Heck yeah, I'll use all this valuable time I can. I hope there's some ears that can hear me. I'm going back to what APHIS, which is Animal Plant Health Inspection Services, is doing in their BRS department. Um, BRS is uh, Biotechnology Regulatory Services. So there's a, a comment that came up about, I don't know, they made their decision maybe a month ago month and a half ago, but they're going to allow 
uh, and here's, uh, I'll just quote the one lawsuit out of eight people that made comments on the most uh, rewritten allowance, the largest and most important genetic engineering um, regulatory decisions, and only eight people commented on it. Very shady. Anyway, they're in one lawsuit. There's one company, uh, Center for Food Safety, that makes great points in an 87 page document um, that's a lawsuit. And I found them doing history out of reading those eight comments, most of the, by which were uh, major corporations looking to do climate change. A lot of them are climate change companies to go with Biden's new thing. And I uh, suspect that uh, the public lands are gonna be put into lease agreements uh, for patented technology for climate change. And I'm going to make sure that BLM, you know, writes back at it. I want to read some of the new stuff that's happened and I'll click back in because I got 20 more minutes. Um, the new part of 340.4 exempts GE plants from regulatory status review if another GE plant of the same species with the same traits determined by the same mechanism of action like a drought tolerant, that's a mechanism of a trait, has already been exempted from 340.4. So if you research that, there are over 200 traits available to be used. A lot of them will work with sagebrush and public land plants. This raises questions of whether or not GE plants with multiple traits uh, that the exemption applies to regardless if a given, given trait combination was generated as a molecular or as a breeding stack, which hey, means- Josh, it, yep. I, I apologize. I'm certain that I am just about to come right back to you, but I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and ask others if they do want to raise their hands, they certainly can have that opportunity. I'm going to say, Josh, you've clearly got some, some further input. So I'd say keep your hand raised as well, but I'll just encourage others. Um, there's still time remaining for you to provide verbal input. And as we're waiting, uh, I'm going to go ahead. It actually looks like Mark Rollins also raised his hand. So Mark, we're going to go ahead and go to you and there'll probably still be time to get back to Josh as well. So Mark, we're going to ask you to unmute. Hi, oh. Mike. Or Mark, your mic is live. Mark, your mic is live. I apologize, oh, tongue twister. My internet out at the ranch in the Gold Butte is sometimes flaky, so I hope you can hear me. I, I, I want to make it clear that I am not saying that the Gold Butte Road should be repaved. I actually think it should be put back to a gravel road and put down uh, six, eight inches of road base so that the sand that it's on now doesn't wash out. But I think uh, the speed limit does need to be enforced. We do need to keep the speeds down out there. I mean, even as bad as that road is now, you pass people going 60, 70 miles an hour or they pass you. So uh, I think, yes, the road needs to be improved so it's not so hard on vehicles, but it needs to be done in a way that does not encourage excessive speeding you know, or speeding. So that that's my comment. Excellent. Well, internet was perfect for that. So we appreciate your input. And Josh, I see you are back up with your hand raised. We'd like to go back to you. Josh, we're going to ask you to unmute your microphone and you'll be back on. Welcome. Well, okay, my hand wasn't raised. I was going to give a few people minutes to grab the mic if they want to, but we got 14 minutes. We can get a lot done. I'm just getting warmed up as all nervous at first. But uh, yeah, I've actually written comments. I've reached out to Kirk on 
uh, I didn't see it. If you go online, you can go visit the BLM website and read, you know, everything that's going on since 2008 on the BLM National NEPA register, because NEPA is so great, you can share all the info. And I put a comment in, in the 2008 public input period, and I never got a response back, at least not that's in the public input summary report of 2018. So I've reached out to Kirk on that, and I'm assuming he'll get back to me when he can. We're making progress. But uh, you'll never guess, back then in 2018, I also saw this wicked new gold rush that the corporations are uh, uh, you know, focusing on. They are going to genetically patent plants and animals and lease them to the public lands. I assure you. Um, it was done in the BLM 2.0 and they're saying uh, guided by science. Well, their science is perverted. That's absolutely certain. Uh, we can't get uh, peer reviews that are third party. Why is that? I request that we do third party reviews for uh, with an open public forum so we can see what people are talking about back and forth uh, on, uh, on genetic engineering things that are happening. So anyway, I'm going to get off track. I almost want to just start over because we should talk about OHV. This is my backyard. I'm in the industry of OHV. I'm just going to lower my hand and reopen because I only got 11 seconds. I appreciate William, you're so patient. Thanks, bud. Three, two, one. William, you're talking away on mute again, buddy. Uh, <laughs> it had to happen a second time. I'm so sorry. Um, Rick, I see that you have your hand raised. We're gonna go ahead and ask you to unmute your microphone and your mic will be live. Hi, Rick. Comments Rick. that I wanted to there you provide. Go. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I had a hard time hearing the first part of that. Okay. I, I did develop some comments that I wanted to provide. Um, my interest in Gold Buke is as a uh, horseman and having visited the area, uh, I have some ongoing uh, things that I'd like to see kind of addressed in this plan. I would be opposed to um, access or amenity fees as was previously brought up as a topic. I share Don Davis's concern having to do with uh, horse trailer parking and availability. And if it would be possible in the area to provide some sort of uh, water that could be used for stock purposes, uh, watering horses and mules, it can be difficult to haul enough water out there with you if you're going out for an extended period of time. So those would be some concerns that I would like to see addressed in the plan. And that's all the comments I have. Excellent. Well, thank you, Rick. Um, behind you, uh, we have Josh's raised hand. And I'll again encourage everyone, we're now closing in probably on an effective 10 minutes left because we're going to have some time we're going to spend uh, on a couple final comments in the last slide um, before we come to the top of the hour. But uh, I encourage everyone to go ahead. That's still 10 minutes, plenty of time to go ahead and get information and, and input from various members of the public. And I'd ask everyone to go ahead that wants to, to provide input, to raise their hands now. So Mark, I see that you have raised your hand again. We're going to go ahead. We're going to ask you to unmute and then we'll hear from you yet again. Thank you. Um, one thing that was mentioned earlier and has not been mentioned since is invasive species. Um, we had somehow uh, nightshade uh, got onto our ranch. And over the last three years, we've spent a couple of thousand dollars trying to get rid of nightshade. I don't know how many of you know how invasive nightshade is. And so that, that is an important issue uh, to try and keep invasive species out. I mean, we have dealt with that personally. Uh, the second thing is 
one of the reasons, I mean, this ranch has been in my family for 120 years, 111 years now. And uh, my whole point in buying it was uh, because we have quite a bit of water out here was to give people a place to get water for their horses. Now we're right on the edge of Gold Butte. Uh, our ranch is on the Arizona Nevada border, but and places where people can uh, pen their horses for the night. Uh, so we are trying, uh, I mean, our, our whole purpose is to give public input to Gold Butte in a way that the BLM can't, uh, partly because we have water and partly because it's private property. That, that's all. All right, excellent. Thank you for the continued input. So again, I'll remind folks, um, we have basically seven minutes left uh, with the opportunity to provide verbal input. Um, anyone wants to raise their hand at this time to go ahead and, and fill that space available to you? We certainly encourage it. Josh, I see you've raised your hand. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna go back to you, ask you to unmute, and we look forward to hearing from you again. Go ahead, Josh. All right. Well, thanks again, William. And uh, yeah, Mark's got a beautiful place up there called Aravada Springs. Um, it's got cultural significance and they've built actually places for the public to be able to come and experience uh, culture and spend the night and be in that beautiful dark skies BLM Parachute National Monument border. Um, his business is the same as mine in another aspect of life. I actually came on the genetic engineering at a BLM public comment back in, uh, I think it was 2015. Anyway, um, they started talking to me about some, uh, how they're genetically engineering wolves. And I started following what APHIS was doing. And that's what showed me what was going to actually end up becoming you know what it's going to be a trillion dollar industry for the corporations to restore the public lands through genetic engineering and lease agreements through the state and yeah through the seed uh, seed coalition group which i'm gonna reach out to but um darn it my two minutes is already gone I wanted to talk about ohv and how ohv should have it's a huge growing industry <clears throat> one third out of all nevadians uh, have uh, an OHV, we need to make room for them to be able to operate. And they're OHV, they're not, they're not, uh, most of the people would have to require going through numerous amounts of street legal kits to make them road legal. I feel that this place has always had OHV riders and it should always continue to have OHV riders and we should make more rides available. Thank you. Perfect timing. Um, excellent. So I'll go ahead. We've basically got uh, four minutes left now. Um, still plenty of time to go ahead and have folks provide additional verbal input. Um, we'll mention it again, but you know there are other going to be other opportunities. Um, to go ahead and actually provide input. We'll talk about those in the slide in a second, but also we'll also mention at the, the last slide, there is going to be another uh, um, virtual forum as well. So we'll go ahead and talk about that. So it's not even just that um, you'll have more opportunities this evening to provide input. So with that, I again encourage anyone who wants to raise their hand and provide verbal input right now to do so. All right, Josh, I recognize you. See you there again. Perfect. You're going to, there we go. We're back on air. William. Oh, I mean, yeah. Nobody's going to use the time. I'm just going to kind of ramble for a minute. It's on record. 
Um, you know, we're from M the Mesquite area. We are an OHV town. We've, we've built one staging area um, for uh, OHV, um, you know, dispatching. So it's welcoming visitors to come into our town. And we have the plans to make two more OHV staging areas in the city of Mesquite by, uh, I think they said, the end of the year. Um, the trails alone are very valuable to our economic status. Um, we need to be able to invite visitors to come back year after year after year after year so to keep exploring. And if Gold Butte could have more, some maybe some off-road trails made to make, be made in the way of loops without damaging any of the other cultural in situations, uh, the loops are so nice because then you're always seeing new stuff. Every time around the corner, it's all about user experience. Every time you do a loop, you know, it's mostly a trail in, trail out. It's all new. So I invite you guys to really look into potentially doing loops. Um, dispersed camping is so free. Leave that open. We need to be able to go where we want. Um, and uh, yeah, some amenities would be great. Uh, signage for places when I drive into the public lands to know that a place like Aravada Springs is X amount of miles away. I might go, oh, Aravada Springs, two miles away, and they offer amenities. Great. Uh, I think that would be a nice to have signage for local business too. And uh, we still got two more minutes. If ain't nobody want to talk, I'll be back. Thanks, William. You know, Josh, before you drop off, let's go ahead and just extend your time by one minute. Yeah, Adam, then... If you ain't got nobody there, we'll just keep running them. I feel All so... right. You got one, one more minute. minute to go. And Where was I? The so room. the cultural sites are also so important. A lot of, a lot of uh, mesquites um, community are snowbirds, and most of them are older, retired people. Um, to get up to a cultural site, super important. Um, and they've always, I heard recently, they just signed a big uh, the, uh, stand. Somebody's made a, uh, you know, a complaint that they've recently box, boxed off within the last few months, being able to get to some petroglyphs. And uh, it impacted Stan's ability to take his guests on the trip. They were in visiting him from somewhere. They wanted to see him, but unfortunately, she was unable to go up there because uh, she didn't have the ability to walk through that gravel and sand. I mean, it's gravel and sand. We just drive on up there. Shouldn't be a big deal. All right. Thank you, William. Thank you for all of your input and actually for the input of all the participants tonight. And I'm going to go ahead, I am going to hand it back over to Allie and Shauna, and they're going to go ahead and take us out this evening. Great. Thanks, William. And thank you, everyone, for your input today. I do just want to go over uh, the couple ways that you can provide input um, and remind you that the information gathering period uh, extends until March 3rd, 2022. So uh, any input, including anonymous input, will be accepted at any time, um, although input accepted before March 3rd uh, would be most helpful in the development of the proposed action. So we thank you for your participation again. If you wish to provide more input, please use the following methods. You can see them on your screen now. So again, the uh, public forum website at virtualpublicmeeting.com slash gold dash butte dash national dash monument dash EA. Uh, you can also email the project email, which is blm underscore nv underscore lvfo underscore goldbute at blm.com. And you can also mail your input. Uh, so the address for that will be BLM Las Vegas Field Office, attention GBNM, IP, and EA. Um, and that address is 4701 North Torrey Pines Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada. 89130. And I will now hand it off to Shauna for the closing remarks. Thank you, Allie. Uh, I just want to say to everybody who's remained with us to the end of the meeting, how much I appreciate you for all of you spending your evening with us to talk about the Gold Butte National Monument. 
Um, I really did hear a lot of great input and a lot of really good ideas to consider in the plan tonight. Um, I encourage you to please continue to send us input in the ways that Allie just described. We're taking it still for uh, up until March 3rd. And, you know, it will only help to make our plan better. So thank you again, and I hope you all have a great evening.